Today is July 16th, and this is The View with Catherine Chang. Today's topics are Kaohsiung by-election and TikTok, and Taiwan loosens entry restrictions for Chinese children. And first, I want to talk about Kaohsiung by-election and TikTok. China's TikTok has become the focus of Kaohsiung mayoral by-election because KMT candidate Li Meijin released her campaign MV on TikTok yesterday. But she adapted the lyric of a new song by famous singer Jay Chow, Zhou Jielun, and it broke out copyright disputes. The MV, you know, was deleted within 24 hours after release. This incident involves TikTok, national security, and even Kaohsiung's famous Dan Jin Hamburger, Dan Dan Hanbao. There are several points. A. Why using TikTok? KMT candidate Li Meijin claimed that it is a song from TikTok and she thought there would be no copyright problem if she released the song on the platform. Obviously, she was wrong because she adapted the lyrics without permission. And this is definitely a copyright issue. B. National security issue. TikTok is a Chinese company, and Chinese multinational internet technology company ByteDance, Zhongguo Zijie Tiaodong Keqi Gongsi, launched TikTok in 2016. Over the past year, TikTok has been downloaded more than 750 million times. However, TikTok was accused of leaking personal information and might have handed the information to China. So they were investigated by the United States government. As a KMT candidate of Kaohsiung mayor, didn't she even think of national security? Because Li Meijin is considered to be former mayor Han Guoyu 2.0, and she seemed to have the same problem as Han Guoyu, and that is the pro-China suspicions. C. How did a campaign MV involving the Dan Dan hamburger? Because the uh, adapted lyric mentioned that going to Kaohsiung's Dan Dan hamburger and having their Chinese pork congee with preserved eggs. That is what we call pi dan sou rou zou. And this is the pi dan sou rou zou. Wow, I feel hungry. And this is uh, what we have. And also we talk about a uh, uh, pi dan. That is the preserved egg. It looked like black, right? But I think it's kind of delicious for me. But you know, actually, Actually, let's go back to the issue. But the problem is, there is no pi dan so rou zhou in dan dan hamburger at all. It triggered a big discussion among netizens. Dan dan hamburger is just like Gaoshou Madano. I have to say, it is more popular than Madano. And how can a person who is running for the Gaoshou mayor get dan dan hamburger wrong? Also, we can see from the latest poll, DDD candidate Chen Qimai received 52.9% uh, support, but KMT candidate Li Meijin only received 14.3% support. I have to say, the TikTok incident is totally a loss for KMT candidate. Second issue, Taiwan loosens entry restrictions for Chinese children. CCC head Chen Shizhong said at a press conference yesterday that the starting from July 16, they will loosen entry restrictions for Chinese children under the age of two. Chinese citizens are unable to enter Taiwan right now, and the new announcement will be the first step toward reopening borders to Chinese nationals with Taiwanese residence permits. But why specifically two-year-olds? Chen Shizhong replied frankly. He said, well, it is because they haven't chosen a household register yet. And it means that they might choose Taiwan nationality and become a Taiwanese. That's why they are given priority. Many people might wonder what we call these uh, minor children, Xiaoming. Well, it is because the uh, MAC, Menet Affairs Council Minister Chen Mingtong, used Xiaoming to refer to minor children who do not have Taiwan nationality, but they hold Taiwan residence permit. It's just like a nickname for them. You know, you can say Xiaoming or you can say Tom, David, or other. Here are the top stories. Today we have one confirmed case, which is important, as she's a woman in her 30s and who came back from the Philippines. 
Talking about the Hong Kong issue, the organizer of Hong Kong pro-democracy primaries, Oh Nuo Xuan, stepped down amid Beijing pressure. And the primaries were amid a selection democracy candidates to stand in September elections for the Hong Kong Legislative Council. However, Hong Kong Liaison Office claimed that the primaries could violate the new national security law. Oh Nuo Xuan he said that a uh, withdrawal is the only choice I have to protect myself and others. To voice an opposition to the controversial law, U.S. President Donald Trump signed Hong Kong Autonomy Act yesterday, and China kind of summoned U.S. Ambassador Terry Brinsenton over U.S. action on Hong Kong. And Chinese Vice Foreign Minister Zheng Zeguang said that U.S. step to sanction Chinese entities and individuals grossly violated international law and the basic principle of the international relations. China will continue to take countermeasures to uh, resolutely safeguard the core interests. Despite the China threat, U.S. imposes visa restrictions on Hawaii employees. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said that we will um, impose visa restrictions on Chinese technology companies like Huawei and that provide material support to regimes engaging in human rights violations and abuses globally. On the other hand, Reuters published an article revealing U.S. sanctions on the TikTok, and the title is Trump Administration Action on Risk Posed by TikTok Likely in Weeks, said by officials. They wrote, according to a White House official, Trump's administration is studying the national security risk of social media applications, including TikTok and WeChat, with action to address the issue expanded in the coming weeks. Regarding China's threat to sanction defense control, we're talking about a defense contractor, Rocky Martin, over Taiwan arms deal. Rocky Martin claimed that FMS, uh, that is a foreign military sale, or government to government, and it's a government to government transaction. So we work closely with the United States government on any military sales to international customers. Also, United States Secretary of State Mike Pompeo also hopes that China will reconsider threats to sanction Rocky Martin. And he said, I regret that the CCP choose to make that threat against Rocky Martin. I hope they will not follow through on the remarks that were made yesterday. Talking about the tension between U.S. and China, I want to mention the report by the Washington Post. Washington Post published an article, and the title is, Can Taiwan Survive a Second Trump Term? They wrote that, if China decided to make a military play for Taiwan, Trump's instinct instincts would, you know, just cry out against U.S. involvement for a small ally, especially if it would spoil relations with the powerful trading partner. But, you know, I don't totally agree with that because, you know, we said, I don't think China is a powerful trading partner for U.S. And also, the Washington Post also write about Biden. They wrote about Biden. I don't agree with it either. What did they wrote? But Biden has spoken out of forcefully against Xi's treatment of Weirs and in support of Taiwan's striving democracy. Biden looks like a safer bet than Trump's for the survivor of Taiwan's independence independence from the increasingly aggressive regime in Beijing. I said I don't agree with the leader because for the past experience, I think Democratic Party want to be in a safe relations with China compared with the Republican Party, right? In the end, there is a Hong Kong military exercise we know today. And sadly to tell you that after this exercise, around like uh, three Point, uh, 2 8 uh, p.m. A military OH 5th AD helicopter crash at the airbase in Xinju, and the two soldiers were identified as pilot and co pilot. And this is what I said this is the military helicopter. And this is what some people shoot the footage from their cell phone. And, um, you know, two soldiers just die. You know, I have to say that when they try to do the forced landing, they avoid the residential areas to prevent more casualties. 
and the reason for the crash is still under investigation. That will be the view for today, and we feel sorry for their family, but you know, we will know what's going on and what happened. This is Kathleen Chang. I'll see you tomorrow.